warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we welcome you once again to this, our beautiful Ramadan episode in these early hours of the day. The topic we have today is an important one. In fact, is a topic that if well understood and implemented, we will live up to the standard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described us with. Bimana, we, the nation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The topic is enjoining the good and forbidding the evil as a collective responsibility of one and all. Allah has created us and then Allah says, Ayahsabal insan ayyutara kasura. Ayahsabal insan. Do men think that they have been created and left neglected bimana, without do's and don'ts? Without responsibilities? Of course, we have do's and don'ts. So, it is by doing what we have been commanded to do and by abstaining from that which we have been forbidden and prohibited from doing that we become real humans. Remember the purpose of us being on the face of the earth is to worship Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ أي بمعنى بمعنى إِلَّا لِيُوَحِّدُونِي بِالْعِبَادَ I have not created jinn and mankind except that they should worship me. Bima'ana, that they should single me out in worship. You direct all acts of worship to Allah alone. But you have people that have decided not to worship Allah. You have people that have decided to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah commands good and forbids evil. The Prophet of Allah, Mayuti'ar-Rasoolah, faqad ata Allah. Whoever obeys the Prophet Sallallahu whoever obeys the Prophet Sallallahu has indeed obeyed Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, by extension, the Prophet himself commands good and prohibits evil. But is it something that is restricted to an individual that you have to be a prophet, or you have to be a scholar before you can command good and forbid evil? No. The hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a famous hadith that I'm sure almost all of you are aware of this hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِي فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Whomsoever amongst you sees an evil, al-munkar, munkar, whoever sees an evil, must correct it. The scholar said, it is a command, فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ He must stop it with his hand. Authority. Some of the scholars said, this is referring to the people of authority. Or, it is referring to any individual that has authority over those that are doing wrong. Bimana, a father in his house, when his children are doing evil, he has authority over them. He can stop them with his hand because he has authority over them. That if you are not able to stop it with your hand, then with your tongue, you speak against it. As some scholars said, you call for help. Use your tongue to call for help. Because you cannot do it alone. You cannot be able to stop it with your hand. Then use your mouth to call for reinforcement so that evil will not prevail. Or you preach against it. If you are not able to do that, then you hate it in your heart. And that is the weakest level of Iman. It doesn't mean that you don't have Iman. And then, amazingly, it could also mean that you have the reward of the one that is correcting with his hand. Simply because... Allah does not overburden a soul beyond that which it can carry. So if at that particular moment, the only thing that you can be able to do, or the only thing that you are able to do is to hate it in your heart vehemently so, you will be rewarded in full because 
That is your ability. That is what you are able to. Fattakullah mustadatum. Fear Allah in accordance with your ability as much as you are able to. So here it is a collective responsibility. Marra'a minkum, minkum amongst you. It could be me, it could be you. Marra'a minkum munkara. Whoever amongst you sees an evil. So it's a collective responsibility. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Here, yani, it is not something that is upon one particular individual, but a community, a group of people should be able to do that. It's a collective responsibility. Yani, let there be some people in the ummah that will keep enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. Some scholars said, you enforce the good and forbid the evil. They said the word, your enjoying is too soft. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, well, takum minkum ummatu yad'auna ila al-khayr. Yad'auna ila al-khayr. Wa ya'muruna bil ma'aruf wa yanahawna anil munkar. Wa ulaika hum al-muflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, well, takum minkum. Let there be from amongst you ummatu yad'auna ila al-khayr. A group that are calling on to good. What is good? Yad'auna ila al-khayr. What is good? There isn't any good that can equal the goodness that comes with Tawheed. So the topmost thing for you to enjoin people to, the topmost thing for you to call people onto, Wallahi is Tawheed. Call them to worship Allah alone. Call them to worship Allah alone. And then if they do that, as the Prophet Sallallahu said to Mu'adh bin Jabal when he sent him to Yemen, if they obey you in that, then ask them to pray five times a day because that is the most next most important good. Nothing outrest, and there is nothing above salah except the statement of testimony. And then, in accordance with other things that follow suit, you enjoy the good and. Good is what? Al-Ma'roof. Good. All nature of good. And then, let there be a group of people that will rise amongst you. That will command the good, enjoin the good, and forbid the evil. The worst of evil, the evilest thing is what? Shirk. Wainahuna anil munkar. In another place that you prohibit evil there isn't anything eviler than shirk so you have to ensure that people are prevented and forbidden from committing shirk wherever you are and then Allah says then such are the successful ones as if there is no success for anyone that does not enjoy the good and forbid the evil and that is why Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'aruf wa tanahuna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. Allah says, Kuntum, you, you, Kuntum khayra umma, the umma of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're the best of nations. Why? Limadha ya Rabb? Ta'muruna bil ma'aruf, you enjoy the good. Wa tanahuna anil munkar, you forbid the evil. Wa tu'minuna billah, and you believe in Allah, yani Islamic monotheism. That is what differentiates us. The Prophet said, you should, com you should command the good and forbid the evil. Or you raise up your hands and pray to Allah and then Allah will answer you. Allah will send tyrant leaders upon you. You raise up your hands, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah will answer your doors. Why? Because you have failed to do the basics and that is Al-amru bil ma'roof wa nahyu anil munkar. So wherever you are, you don't have to be a memorizer of the Quran. You have to enjoy the good and forbid the evil. And imagine the ripple effect of that. When you enjoy the good and forbid the evil in your local cycle and your local sphere of influence, imagine the ripple effect. Wallahi, the society will be a better place. It is not something that you push to another person. If you have the ability, do it and join the good. Live the good, forbid the evil, and avoid the evil yourself, 
and then inshallah we will find ourselves living in a society of our dream mimicking what the companions enjoyed of living on the face of the earth subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shallallahu ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik